What are those gamers up to? Don't they know I'm busy releasing myself? <laughs> When I played Prince of Persia The Lost Crown at the start of the year, I thought to myself, man, what if we had a Prince of Persia game that was like this with its awesome traversal mechanics, but with a lot more action and a lot more combat? And then seemingly my prayers were answered, where Ubisoft took an established IP and gave it to a talented indie team in Evil Empire, the creators of Dead Cells. But how did I get on with the rogue Prince of Persia ahead of its release? Well, it's complicated, so let's get into it, starting with aesthetics. Visually, this game impresses. The backdrops to the rogue prints are exquisite. Each region has its own different color theme that differentiates itself from the regions before and after. The death and teleport animations are beautiful, and I really like how smoothly they transition from one place to another. The enemies don't seem too self-aware, and have decided that matching skulls is going to be their uniform for this incursion. Have you noticed that our caps have actually got skulls on them? <laughs> I don't, so... Uh... Hands. Are we the baddies? I'm being a little bit reductive, but maybe they just left all of their furry hats at home. <laughs> the prince's movements are fluid and the animations string comfortably together. Enemy attacks can get a little bit lost in amongst each other. If the meat in the Skullman sandwich is about to hit you, good luck being able to tell. Not really a visual thing, more of a gameplay thing, but I do wish the enemies could hit one another and potentially decide not to attack based on this. It'd make dodging and flipping over a group of enemies as they hit one another so much more satisfying. As it stands, they become a Hanna-Barbera cloud of violence whenever they cluster up and attack. When it comes to sound design, the soundtrack is interesting, with beats laid over a more traditional Middle Eastern style music. It's nice to listen to, but if I'm honest, after a few hours of hearing the same tracks over and over, it did great on me a little bit. The game would benefit from a few different tracks per region for the amount of time you're going to spend coming back through those initial regions especially. The enemies don't have strong audio cues when they're preparing to attack, so you'll be relying on visual cues. This isn't to say there aren't any audio cues, they just don't ring through the rest of the audio. This is fine solo, but as mentioned earlier, in groups it can be a bit of a mess. The ambient sound design is great with the, the footsteps and water splashes and all of those sounding nice and crisp. In the story, the Huns have attacked and you, gamer prince dude, do you have to save your people and your family? I honestly haven't engaged much with the story. I find unvoiced dialogue a slog to get through after a while. Where in Hades 2, the fully voiced characters could pull me in and get me out of that roguelike brain wave thought pattern, I couldn't hear if I'm honest. When so much of the game is about speed and flow, these breakups of dialogue or just text on screen really interrupts the flow. Maybe there could be a better way to deliver some of the story, but I found just like stopping and sitting there and speaking to people just, yeah, it didn't gel with the rest of the game. Which brings us to the most important part. Let's get all that other stuff out of the way. What really matters is the gameplay. Combat has a few key elements. You have a regular attack, a heavy attack, which varies depending on the weapon. A kick, which is great for controlling more than one enemy or just yeeting a single foe to a quick death. You can then use your superior traversal to approach from different angles and a ground pound to attack from above and do damage. You have a dodge which for platforming is a dash and for combat sees you vault over your enemies. The roguelike boon system here utilizes these powers, turning vaults and kicks to enemies and environmental kills into different ways to be upgraded, either through elemental attacks or maybe giving back health or giving extra money. It makes you adjust the way that you play each run, which keeps the gameplay varied across multiple runs. However, the boon design overall feels a little bit backwards. A lot of the boons have no initial value and require other boons around it to give it a bonus. It has this mechanic where boons on different sides might get a bonus from that boon and vice versa. This out of all the designs in the game is just not fun. It completely misunderstands the point of boons and upgrades. You can easily have four boons which give you zero value. When I say backwards, I think they should give their main function a standard and then their bonuses can be using this cooperative mechanic between boons. It gets even more frustrating when you can unlock the upgrades for the effect without the effect itself being there, which is a little bit absurd. This just feels bad and makes the RNG brutal, as you could just never find the matching boons necessary to make one that you want to use usable. 
This results in so many dud runs that just go nowhere as you'll find that you have no lethality. You need a huge damage output when you make it to the garden biomes because there's a lot of enemies to deal with at a time. And so if you don't have that by that point, it's over. Overall, it feels like a game that was designed around boons having their core effects, and then the choice was made to reverse it, causing a steep difficulty spike midway through. The boons are even more worthless against bosses, as so many of them rely on either being able to kick an enemy into an environment, or stun them, or move them, or many of the different elements of the game which aren't there when you get to a boss. Beyond this, some of the level design doesn't work with the combat mechanics. In the library, specifically, I would attempt to vault over an enemy just to realize there was a peg in the wall and land on that instead of behind the enemy, leaving me suspended above them like a big purple piñata waiting to be popped. It broke the flow and it really hindered me. Platforming in general can be a little bit finickety, with sometimes me aiming to land on a ledge and the game going, oh, I thought you wanted to keep running up the wall afterwards and impale yourself on these spikes. Yeah, it, it can be quite frustrating. Most of the time I kind of knew what the prince was going to do, and other times it just became a tangle of controls and inputs. When it works, you'll be breezing through the side rooms and the side objectives, but when it doesn't, you'll lose half your health bar to the wrong combination of environmental elements. The game lacks a strong sense of progression. Initially beyond unlocking weapons and boons, the cross-run progression is very limited. The third character might have something for this, but by the time that he gave me his fetch quest, I was about done with the game. I felt so often that I was just running in place, and I would finish so many runs with barely anything to show for it. Once I had all the weapons and boons unlocked, all I could do was just bank darkness endlessly. So the core combat and action and platforming are all really fun, even with their occasional issues, but the systems around the moment to moment gameplay really lets it down. On a technical level, there are no quality setting adjustments available to you. So if you have frame drops like I was in many sections of the game, you don't really have much recourse to improve this. I eventually dropped to 1080p and still had issues. I'm not super technical, but from what I can tell, it seems just poorly optimized. I'm going to make another Hades 2 comparison just because it was the most recent game I played, but on that it recommended me that I could play on Ultra, I played on Ultra no problem, I would drop down to high while recording footage just to ensure my frames, and had very few slips. But here it would get really sluggish. Wanna alt tab? Forget about it. You'll need to restart the game. While it hasn't got a Steam Deck verification at this point, as of right now, I wouldn't recommend it on Deck either. Having played it on there, same problems persist. For a game expecting pixel perfect platforming for sections, this needs to be addressed. Overall, The Rogue Prince of Persia feels like it needs a little bit longer in the oven and makes reviewing it so hard. The core is here, and in a few months with some quality updates, it could be something really fun and exciting, but today, on release when this video comes out, it's coming up just a bit short. I really want to like this game, I really want to recommend this game, but in its current state, I can't. I think I'll revisit it in a few patches time, and I've given some feedback to the devs in the meantime. It can be a punishing experience, and not one where you feel like you're making continuous strides towards an eventual victory. There is the skeleton of a fun and fresh experience here, but the meat on the bones is tough, chewy, and unsatisfying. I would recommend sitting on this one until there have been at least some updates. It is in early access as of today. Not too sure when the full version 1 release will be. It might be worth waiting until then. But what do you think? Am I crazy? Do I just need to get good? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for your time, and I'll see you next time where we'll talk about a game I really enjoy because this, making this video hurt. Okay, bye.